Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. Monitor doesn't work? Reboot the server. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Monitor doesn't work? Reboot the server. This happened not too long ago, and I'm changing some of the details just in case. The cast and crew. Mr. Yonderboy, your intrepid storyteller. IT guy, the client's vice president of information technology. Also their one and only technical resource. Vendor, a really cool vendor from out of state. There with a USB drive in hand to finish up a multi-month project. The backstory. We provide outsourced IT to this client and are responsible for managing their old infrastructure that runs their main line of business application. This integrates with a portion of their website and is used by all of their clients and well as all of their staff. We were responsible for deploying a physical host server, a massive beast retail cost over $120,000 24 cores, 512 gigabytes RAM, SSD SAS drives, NVMe PCIe adapters, Tesla GPUs, the works, and about 20 VMs on it to support the new version of their app. Over a hundred users would be connecting via RDP to VDI sessions on it, it'd be running a couple SQL databases and multiple application servers, as well as a couple different web front ends. It's a pretty complex application with tons of moving parts. Anyway, this was during the development phase. For different vendors were involved of which we were just one. We were in charge of the overall project management however, and had a financial incentive, red penality clause, in the contract if things were not ready on time. Everything was going great, things were on track and on time. We had set up a management VM for the client to do all the work they needed to do manage the host and all the various VMs. We also set up a management workstation 15 feet from the server in their server room with an RDP shortcut to that VM and a shortcut to the IDRAC, out-of-band management tool for remote control, rebooting, etc. We gave the client's IT guy a full day's training on how to access the server via the management VM from his desk and from the management workstation. All is well. On the day that everything imploded one of the vendors had flown in from out of state to do the final code drop of their portion of the software on their VMs. They'd been remotely accessing the system for weeks at this point so I'm unsure why they flew and maybe for a free lunch and beers after work who knows. Anyway, we were standing by to assist. At this time there were two other groups of vendors logged on to various VMs including a group of developers doing whatever it is that developers do. A SQL DBA was also running a process to convert the existing information from the old system to the new system. I'm a bit fuzzy about exactly what was going on, but I know it was taking quite a bit of time, and due to limitations on the source system pausing and resuming the process was not possible. Or at least not the way it was being done. The client themselves also had over a dozen people logged on to the system doing integration and QA testing. All in all there were upwards of 30 people actively working on various aspects of the system. This was Friday. It was due to go live on Sunday evening slash Monday morning. The vendor on site told the IT guy that he needed to log on to the server so, instead of going to the management workstation or connecting from his desk, the IT guy grabs some dusty old monitor from somewhere, plugs it into the host, along with keyboard and mouse and then calls me when it doesn't work. IT guy, Mr. Yonderboy, I've plugged a monitor into the server and I'm not getting a picture. Something is wrong with it. I think it's crashed. Me, well, I'm remotely connected to it now, so I'm confident it's up and running. Why are you plugging a monitor into it? IT guy, the highly paid consultant from out of state that is here to buy us lunch and beer vendor is here to install their final code drop and needs access to the server. Me, well, nobody needs to log on to the host. Why not just have him use the management workstation there in the computer room? IT guy, he says he needs access to the server. 
he didn't say anything about a workstation. Me, he's been accessing his VMs remotely all this time. He can log on to the management workstation to access them from there. IT guy, there is something wrong with the server. I need your help getting it working. It has no video. Me, internal sigh, alrighty. Are you plugging into the port on the front or back of the server? We tested them both when we had the server in our shop so they should both work, but try whichever one you're not currently plugged into. IT guy, oh, there is one in the front? Yeah, let me try that. Me, make sure you tap a key on the keyboard or move the mouse to make sure the server wakes up the display. IT guy, yeah, it's still not working. I'm going to need someone to come down here and figure out why this server you sold us is not working. This is pretty time sensitive as this vendor is here from out of state and can't work. Me, you can get him connected via the management workstation across the room from you. IT guy, back to this? He needs to get on the server not on some workstation. Me, the servers he needs access to are all VMs running on that host. They can be accessed using the Hyper-V console on the management workstation or directly via RDP from the management workstation. Logging on to the host directly gets you absolutely nothing that can't be done from the from that workstation. If he needs direct access to the host that can be done via the IDRAC icon on the desktop of that machine, also. IT guy, I think the server is broken. Should I try restarting it? Me, and oh. Please do not restart the server. We've got a lot of people logged on now doing various tasks. We'd need to schedule a downtime and coordinate that with all the other vendors and your testers also. IT guy, well, the server is broken, there is no way anybody is working now. Me, as I said, I'm connected to it now. It's definitely working. Check this out. IT guy, hey, the CD try just ejected. Me, yep, that was me. IT guy, neat trick. How'd you do that to a broken server? Me, barely audible sigh, realizing that it's a lost cause I decided to give the monitor one last shot before driving down there so, this monitor. Does it have any lights on it? IT guy, yeah, it's got an amber light on the power button. Me, okay. And it's good? I mean, the monitor works on other systems? Is this the same one from the KVM in the next rack over? IT guy, no, those cables don't reach, but yeah this one is good. I tried it earlier, and it worked fine. Me, okay, let me hop in the car and head down there. It's about 8am so traffic is bad, and it'll probably take me about 45 minutes to get there. Is vendor available? Can I talk with him? IT guy puts the vendor on the phone. I've been talking with him for weeks so we have a rapport. He's had, remote, obviously, access to the host as he was tweaking some of the settings for his VMs. Vendor, howdy Mr. Yonder boy. How goes it? Me, all good. Looks like I'm headed down there because IT guy is convinced the server is broken even though I've assured him that it's not. He says you insist you need physical access to the actual host? Vendor, well, I've got a USB drive that I need to plug in. It's got all the final production data to copy over. Me, sure, so just plug that in then you can go over to the management workstation ask IT guy which one that is and log on to the host so you can map the USB drive through to wherever you need it or just copy it over direct if that's easier. Vendor, seems like IT guy is pretty insistent on getting me set up on this card here right next to the server for some reason, but I'll try to give that a shot. Me, okay, see you in a bit. Can you put IT guy back on the phone? IT guy, hey? You on the way. Me, yep, be there as soon as possible. Don't touch anything till I get there, alright? IT guy, okay, but you better hurry. Everyone is pretty pissed off that this fancy new server you sold us is broken. Me, I'll be there as soon as possible. The turning point.
I grab my stuff and head out the door. I don't get phone calls or texts while I'm driving for safety and company policy reasons, but as soon as I park and look at my phone I see I've missed a call from our NOC. I call them back as I'm heading into the building to see what's up. I probably should have guessed. Turns out that the client's entire new infrastructure went offline a few minutes after I left the office. The host and all the VMs. I check my email missed call alerts from a couple of the other vendors, the head of the client's testing department and from IT guy himself. I call IT guy to let him know I've arrived and am riding the elevator up to the data center on the 18th floor. IT guy, hey. Mr. Yonder boy. Everyone called me to say that the testing servers aren't working. Where are those located? You still have those at your offices, right? Me, what do you mean? Those are virtual machines on that host there in the server room. IT guy, the broken server? No, that's for vendors part of the app. That has nothing to do with anything else. Me, that's where everything runs. All the servers are on there. Remember the training? You saw Hyper-V with the 20 different virtual machines? IT guy, yeah, that's like VMware on our old systems, right? The elevator is rising. Somewhat like my blood pressure. I explained, again, that his old system had six different physical servers, running VMware, with various virtual machines on different hosts. The new server was much more powerful, and everything ran on one host. IT guy, a light bulb goes off. Dim, but a light bulb nonetheless. Oh. So when I rebooted it, everything went down. Me, wait, what? Can you open the door, please? I'm right outside. The conversation continues in person. It turns out that not only did he reboot the server, he power cycled it. And not by pressing the power button. That'd do a graceful shutdown. He didn't even hold the power button down for a few seconds to do a forced power off. He went to the back of the server and pulled both power cords at once. Only decades of customer service and technical support experience allowed me to remain calm. That and I was wearing a tie I don't think I could breathe deeply enough to scream. The aftermath. Some of the development work and testing was interrupted but that was relatively minor. All of that was minor UI tweaks that could have been completed after GoLive if necessary. The major problem was that the SQL job that was running failed and had to be restarted. This did not complete in time and the GoLive had to be rescheduled. The client's CFO and CEO tried to invoke the penalty clause because they'd already printed documentation for their clients and mailed it out letting them know about the new processes and the switchover date and this had to be delayed by a month, something to do with batching, and it could only be done at the end of a month. I am very glad that vendor was there to see all of this, specifically IT guy pulling the power plugs. He asked him what he was doing and warned him against it, saying that I was on my way and that he'd said he'd not touch anything till I got there. This saved my company significant money. Oh, and that monitor? It was an old, yellowed with age, LCD panel that IT guy had pulled out of storage. It didn't work because its max resolution was 1024x768 and the server needed a higher resolution display. It did display input out of range and when I asked IT guy why he didn't mention that he said that he didn't know what that meant and didn't think it was important.